guys so much for joining me here in the B-Club Lounge. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do the double spiral rope stitch. Uh, this technique is a variation of spiral rope stitch, um, but it is not necessary that you know how to do that stitch before trying the double spiral rope version. Um, I do however have a tutorial for our spiral rope stitch and I will link that in the description box down below so you can check it out um, before you continue with this video if you want to learn that first. I'm going to keep this tutorial really simple and just use some size 8 and size 11 seed beads but really truly this is a highly adaptable uh, stitch and you can add in whatever kind of beads you like, drop beads, fire polish beads, crystals of any type. Uh, it's completely up to you what you have at home uh, to experiment and see what you like and what you want to add in. So I will point out where exactly would be a good place to substitute in um, any other beads for an accent bead as we go along with the tutorial. So let's get started. Alright, I have my beads here on my bead mat as well as a clasp. Um, I just, I'm just using a lobster clasp on a jump ring. I'll set that aside. And for my beads, I'm using size 8 uh, Toho beads. Um, you can use Miyuki. You can also use size 6 beads if you prefer. Um, these will be my core beads or spine beads. And they'll be running along the center of my beadwork. So you need some beads that are, um, the holes are big enough to allow several thread passes. So I would not recommend size 11 or smaller because they will not be able to handle the amount of thread that needs to go through the beads. So I wouldn't go any smaller than a size 8. I'm also using two separate colors of size 11 um, beads, seed beads. These are Miyuki. And I have a size 10 needle. I would um, probably recommend a size 12 just to make it easier to pass through. But for this particular stitch, you can get away with a size 10. <laughs> and that's what I have on my bead mat, so that's what I'm using. And I have a comfortable length of beading thread. I'm using Wildfire. Feel free to use a fire line or whatever you prefer. So I'm just going to scoop these on out of the way and we're going to start here. To begin, I'm going to pick up four of my size 8 seed beads. And as I said, these are going to be my center beads um, or my core beads or my spine beads, whatever you want to call them. That's what I'm using. So I'm using four of these and I'm just going to let them slide down my thread and leave about a 10 inch tail so you can attach your clasp on the end later. And after that, I'm going to pick up seven of my first color of size 11 seed beads. Just like that there. And it's at this point that you can substitute out some of these beads for any other accent beads that you want. So what you can do is pick up maybe three of your size 11s and then one accent bead and then another three of your size 11s um, if you're, you can substitute that center um, or that fourth size 11 C bead with a size 8 or a size 6 or a drop bead. Um, or you can pick up any combination of beads you like um, to make the loop the length you like, the length you want. Um, really and truly, as I said, this is a really adaptable um, stitch. You can use pretty much any combination of beads you like. Just play around with it and find something that you like. So I'm going to take my needle up from the tail end. So my tail is, oops, my tail is down here. So I'm going to pass my needle through all four of those size 8 seed beads. And I'm just going to pull my thread. And when you do that, you're going to have a little loop of your seed beads or whatever beads you're using along the side and I'm going to repeat that with my second color of seed beads here. 
So I'm just going to pick up seven of those. And I'm going to pass through the four size eight seed beads from the till and once again. So just like this. And I'm just going to push that off to the other side so that I have two loops of seed beads sitting on either side of my core beads here. Now to grow your bracelet, you're going to need to pick up one size 8 seed bead and let that slide all the way down your thread. And then I'm going to pick up seven more of my first color of seed bead, so my orange. And I'm using these highly contrasting colors, so it's very easy for you to see. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to talk and count at the same time. Uh, <laughs> clearly not being very successful. So um, I'm using these highly contrasting colors so you can easily see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to count backwards from that size 8 CB that I just added. So I'm going to count four. So starting with this one, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to pass through those top four seed beads. So obviously I have five on here, I'll just be skipping that first one. And I'm going to pass my seed, my needle, sorry, through here. And it forms another loop on top of the first loop of orange that I had there. So now you always want to keep the loop that you're adding, um, I hope this makes sense. Okay, so you, you always want to keep the loop that you're adding, the same color, to one side. So I'm going to keep mine to the right because I'm more comfortable working that way. I'm right-handed. And now I'm going to pick up seven more beads in my second color. So there they are, and again, I'm going to pass through the top four, so I'm just skipping that first one and going through the top four size 8 beads there, making sure that the loop of the same color is off to the right. And there you have it. So I'm going to repeat that just a couple more times so you get the hang of it. So I'm going to be adding my orange. So I just flip my work over so that my orange loops are over to my right because you always want to keep that loop you're adding on one particular side. I'm going to pick up one of my core beads, size 8, and slide it down my thread. And then I'm going to pick up seven of my orange, which is my loop one color. And I'm going to pass through the top four seed beads, including the one that I just added. And also making sure that my orange loops are over to the right. So again, my orange, my new loop just sits on top of those previous orange ones. And to add my green over here, I'm going to flip my work so that the green loops are over to the right. And then I'm going to pick up seven more of my green color. There you go. And I'm going to pass through the top four of my core beads. And when you pull, you added your next loop. Now I know it doesn't look like a whole lot here. <laughs> and it does take a little bit of time to see the spiral start happening. But I promise you, once you keep doing these steps over and over, you will start to see the spiral form. Um, I am going to switch over to another piece that I have um, gotten a little bit further ahead on, but basically you just repeat those same steps. Add one of your core bead, 
make sure your first loop is over to the right add seven of your um, loop one color to the top four spine beads and then flip your work over so your second loop is over to the right and add seven to your top four core beads so it's very repetitive and that's why it's such a simple um, technique now here I have one that's a little bit further ahead so you can see that spiral really start to form here and it's quite pretty oh and another thing I forgot to mention you really don't need to use your best um, size 8 seed beads this is actually a good way to get rid of a color that you may not be so in love with <laughs> maybe you ordered it online and when you actually got it it looks completely different to the photo or you just you know there's a color you don't like so much anymore it happens sometimes you have you really like a color and then you kind of don't anymore I have plenty of those so you can use those in the center of your spiral it's a really good way to get rid of those kinds of beads um you don't really see it anymore anyway uh, so yeah so this is my spiral here that I've got so far and I'm just going to show you how to add the clasp and keep it really simple so I've added my last two uh, loops on here and the way you can tell that is when you look at the score bead at the very top you should see two loops of thread coming out of them so here I can see that I have my green coming out the very top and the orange coming out the very top. So if you have to put down your work for any reason and you come back and you can't remember if you added both loops, that's a good way to check. So coming out of that center spine bead um, at the very top there, I'm going to pick up three more of those size 8 seed beads and let them slide down and I'm going to pick up my clasp here and then I'm going to pass back through towards my beadwork the very last seed bead I picked up and I'm going to hold that and pull everything into place pick up two more of my size 8 seed beads there and let me just separate it so you can see a bit better I'm going to pass down the last four of my spine beads so skipping the three that I picked up for the clasp I'm going to pass down oops going through the CB there I'm going to pass down through the top four of my spine beads and I'm going to show you why I did that in just a second so when you pull it you have your clasp attached here so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find one of the very last loops that I added which would be this orange one right here and I'm going to just pass my needle up through all of those beads in that final orange uh, loop okay, let's do it in two goes there you go so now my needle is coming out the top there and that has gotten me into position to reinforce my clasp so that's what that was all about I just wanted to be able to reinforce this clasp because it does get a lot of wear and tear so I'm just going to pass back through all of those beads again and you're pretty much done so now all you need to do is work your way down through the core beads and tie a few half hitch knots as you go um, if it's too difficult for you to get in between the core beads to tie some half hitch knots you can stitch down the first four and then tie your knots along the loop the last loop along there that could make life a lot easier <laughs> so basically that is how you add your clasp and you just repeat that on the other end of your beadwork to attach the other half of it and that is double spiral stitch it's really simple and it makes nice necklaces and bracelets you can 
do a matching set if you prefer to have both. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button if you haven't already. There will be a full written tutorial um, over on my blog, so you can head over there and check that out. The link will be in the description box down below. So until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.